Welcome everyone, my name is Jack and I'm a Path of Exile casual player. Can we talk about Path of Exile's endgame really quick? Specifically, building a character well enough to get further into the Atlas and actually complete some maps. I made my bow build character, got to tier 6 maps, and tried to beat the Maven Arena Challenge, and I think that's a pretty solid base to talk about a new player's experience with the beginning of the endgame. I'm talking about right at the bottom of the oncoming progression mountain. I think we all know by now Path of Exile is one of those games that relies on its community to pass the torch of information to new players. It doesn't really teach you much in-game. And this created a huge barrier for me once I beat the campaign. What is this Atlas thing? Why are there so many branches and pathways and is this another fucking skill tree? How do I interact with any of these side systems and do I have to mess with them at all or are they just here for fun? And the biggest question of them all that never really gets answered, what the fuck just killed me? The majority of these questions can be easily answered by a simple Google search. Tons of content creators have made videos over the years explaining what you need to do in the endgame and how to build a viable character to get to high tiered maps and bosses. Zizaran has an entire series of hour long videos called PoE University. All of this is there to make sure that you, dear new player, are able to succeed in the endgame. But not me, I'm a rebel, and potentially a masochist. I may need to see my therapist again. I didn't look up any guides, I didn't follow a build for my character, I didn't know how item stats work or how to use the crafting system. I believe that games should provide players with the tools they need to succeed, even if it's not so readily available. So I just used the knowledge I gained from YouTube comments and good old trial and error. And somehow, I made it. 9 months, 250 in-game hours later, I'm progressing in the endgame, and I think it's about time that I share some thoughts. Not a full review, I haven't finished the endgame yet, but just some thoughts. This season's coming to an end, and I've put over 100 hours into one character, so I think I'm about tapped for now. So, from the eyes of a guideless new player, what do I think of Path of Exile's endgame? Two words, magnificent torture. I think the first thing I have to mention is this. At this point, when someone finishes the campaign and wants to dedicate themselves to Path of Exile's endgame, they should be looking for some help from online resources. There is no reason that someone should have to learn all of these complex mechanics and stats on their own. Doesn't mean it's impossible, but I guarantee that at least 50% of my game time was spent on trial and error. I built my own character, I took my lightning arrow gem and made it as powerful as possible, and tried to focus enough on defenses and elemental resistances, but there were questions I had that I couldn't answer, and things I couldn't learn without just pushing forward and learning from failure. Things like, hey, maybe stacking evasion rating isn't enough. Maybe you need at least some armor and a shit ton of health to stay alive, even if you only get hit 25% of the time. And that's really the meat of my critique. My biggest problem with the endgame is how hostile it is to learn things. I've put about 250 hours into the game, and there are still plenty of progression walls I run into. But the issue isn't that I need to learn, it's that there's so much to learn, and the game is extremely punishing to players who are trying to do this on their own. That means without an online guide. When I learned how to manage my elemental resistances and max them out, I was happy for a while, until this game reminded me that my armor and evasion percentages were fucked. At this point, I realized that I had almost no armor because in order to try and build my character using Lightning Arrow, I took a bunch of dexterity-based evasion armor. It just so happened that these armor pieces had green sockets and elemental damage stats. In my mind, I needed enough power to kill things that resisted lightning damage while also taking down large groups of enemies with quick AoE lightning bursts. So I found myself in an evasion-based build with, on average, a 25% chance to be hit. And I was pretty happy with that for a while. I was powerful with a ton of movement speed. I was rarely getting hit, and when I did, I had the resistances and enough health to soak it and recover. I was enjoying my time playing. Then my gameplay hit an immediate difficulty spike. I fought packs of enemies that would one-shot me, and fought bosses that would deplete my health, armor, and resistance flasks, and then one-shot me. I was unable to progress until I figured out what was wrong with my character. And because I died so many times, so fast, without any tool in the game to tell me why, I was left to just guess. Every time this happened, I would stop and think, why did this group of about 40 different monsters kill me? They each have different attacks, so I guess it has something to do with my lack of resistances, but all my resistances are maxed. Okay, maybe it was because I have no health. Well, I've taken all the health nodes around me, crafted health modifiers onto some of my armor, and I'm still below 3000 health. How do I get more health? Okay, well maybe I need more armor because evading 70% of all attacks coming at me is obviously not cutting it. How do I do that with my deck space character? Maybe I can wear this item that gives me a huge bump in strength so I can start wearing armor and evasion items instead of just evasion. Okay, now I just have to find good enough armor that can maintain the same power in my bow because I'm already running into issues where I can't kill things before I run out of flasks. Shit, now I'm fighting this monster that can't kill me, but I can't kill it. This is the thought process that went through my brain over and over again. Without a guide to help me or a build to follow, I was just taking shots in the dark. Luckily, this was my fourth character, so I knew enough of the base mechanics and stats to keep trying, but at some point I got extremely frustrated with how little I knew of how to fix problems with my character. 
The game doesn't tell you what killed you or how you died, so you're basically just guessing on what defenses are lacking by looking at your character sheet. The game doesn't give you any indication of certain power thresholds either, for example, how much damage you should be doing or how much health you should have. You're left to figure that out by how quickly you can defeat enemies and how long you can stay alive. Not only is there a lack of tools to help you understand your specific situation, but as you're learning, the game is actively punishing you with things like the leveling experience death penalty. That's right, every time you die, you are set back a chunk of experience, and it takes a long time to get that experience back. This leads to moments when you're in a map with hundreds of enemies running at you, hundreds of ability effects going off, and all of a sudden you've lost 90% of your health and next thing you know, you have the resurrect options on your screen and you choose to hit Alt F4. But just for a moment, forget about dying a lot and the setback to the leveling experience. Forget stats and the confusing crafting system. Let's ask a very basic question. What do you do in the endgame? Well, Commander Kirik here says that we should be completing maps. He sells us some and can give us map quests to complete. Maps drop on the floor often enough, but each of these maps is different and has a different location on the atlas. Okay, common sense is telling me that one tier of map will lead to another adjacent map, and when you complete that map, it'll open up the next tier and so on and so on. But all the maps are dropping randomly, so it's all RNG. Your pathway through this atlas is based on RNG. It's not only confusing, it's randomized. I still don't know how to get some of these maps or what their importance is. What's this note here saying I can collect someone's soul? I beat that boss already, but I didn't collect a soul. Well, here's something I did figure out pretty easily with help from the game. Once you get to tier 6 maps, otherwise known as yellow maps, you meet Maven and the Envoy, who tells you that Maven will watch you fight the bosses of maps tier 6 and above and alter them a little bit to challenge you. Then when you beat them, you collect their souls. Collect three of these bosses and you'll be invited to challenge arena to fight those three bosses, two at a time. This is probably the easiest part of the endgame to understand. Regardless of what your pathway through the atlas is, you can just RNG any three bosses and try and fight them in Maven's arena. If you want to pick your bosses, just toggle off the Maven thingy and wait for your favorite map to show up. Then there are some other systems, and I gotta tell you, with how much I had to learn to get this far, I didn't even start figuring out these things. Like, what the hell are these splinters for? What is this card game of interrogation or kill? So put all of this complexity together, and you have a new player having to juggle stat mechanics, they have to build their passive skill tree to fit whatever ability they want to use, which also includes mixing and matching the correct skill and support gems by the way, which is its own discovery process. They have to try and fail and guess on what kills them in order to learn the weaknesses of their defenses, of which gets them punished by the XP death penalty. And on top of that, there really isn't a clear direction on how to progress in the endgame, since the atlas is a confusing mess and the maps that drop are RNG. Now I know now how all of this generally works, kind of. But I dedicated 100 hours to this game, basically spent an entire season just learning how all of the shit works. The complexity of the game pushes you to look for outside help, and that leads you to guides and YouTube videos and following and build. Like I said, once you get to this point in the game, I think it's okay that you're expected to do some outside research. What I don't like is that there's a huge difference in the game between someone like me and someone who follows a guide, downloads add-ons, uses someone else's build, and watches Zizaran's hours of university lectures. We aren't playing the same game. The only external help I took was YouTube comments and one loot filter, so my experience was just different. I can't overstate this enough, Path of Exile almost requires you to do online research and use external tools to progress into the endgame, and that makes the game extremely difficult to get into. While veterans may be used to downloading and using third-party add-ons and following seasonal build guides, a new player won't be, so all of this gets added to the barrier to entry for the endgame. And if the endgame of Path of Exile is the real game, and the campaign is just the tutorial, Having that much of a barrier to entry and punishing players who try to learn on their own is going to heavily divide the player base. Either you are a hardcore dedicated fan of Path of Exile who is willing to spend hundreds of hours to experience the actual meat of the game, or you're a casual player who every so often likes to come and build a character to beat the campaign and then leave once you hit your natural progression wall. And for both of these types of players, the game is perfect. You either don't care enough to get too involved, or you are so overly invested that looking up guides and using third party tools is just second nature. However, this alienates everyone in between. What if you just want to try? What if you don't have hundreds of hours to play Path of Exile, but you beat the campaign and you want to try and progress a bit further? What if you care enough to not give up when you hit a progression wall, but don't want to download add-ons, look for builds, or watch hours of YouTube videos to break through that wall? These players caught in the middle don't have any tools in the game to understand what's wrong with their particular character and why they can't progress to more difficult content, and they will be faced with the decision to look it up or stop playing. All right, I think I've complained enough. Now let me tell you the number one reason why I loved this experience and why I will most likely be trying once again to get into the endgame bosses in the next season. My love for this game can be summed up in one feeling, a sense of accomplishment. 
Why do people play Dark Souls, Sekiro, or Elden Ring? These games are extremely difficult and their mechanics are complicated. So why do people love these games so much? A sense of accomplishment. The greater the challenge, the greater the feeling of achievement after overcoming that challenge. And what FromSoft games do so well is provide the player with the tools to find a way to overcome the challenge. It's not easy, but it's always possible. Path of Exile does the same thing, just in a different way. Path of Exile requires you to build your knowledge so you can dive deeper into the game. It pushes you to overcome challenges by searching for answers, either by trying something and learning from it, or by seeking the knowledge of those who have already tried it. This is where the game truly shines. Whenever I felt frustrated, whenever I kept throwing myself at an enemy and ran out of portals for a map, I would stop, take a break, and come back to look at the problem a little more analytically. Where can I shift my passive skill tree? How can I alter my armor just a bit to keep my resistances up, but to better serve my abilities? Do I need all of the movement speed, or should I give some of this up to make sure I'm not running out of mana so often? I would try something, fail, learn, and repeat, and eventually, I got something right. I didn't even notice this at first, but it was happening all along, and it's the only reason I never gave up and never looked up a guide. After blindly changing things with my character, every so often I would get a power boost in some way. I would gain a level and I'd be able to pick up a new skill node to better my defense. I would learn the basics of crafting and get more health, or generally make sure all my gear had the max amount of prefixes and suffixes. I would find a new item that had that one specific stat I needed and still kept all of my resistances up to max. I kept moving forward, having a general goal of completing maps, leveling up, and beating the Merciless Labyrinth. And then at one point, I sort of picked up my head and realized that the rune color on the map was different. Instead of white, it was yellow. I had progressed to tier 6 maps and I didn't really notice. I realized that I could easily beat the Merciless Labyrinth that had one-shot me so many times before. I hit level 80 and had over 3000 health. I had even solved my mana problem. I was progressing, and even though it took an extremely long time, I can't even describe to you how good it felt to beat a tier 6 map boss and have the Maven quest on my screen. And yes, I went on to try and beat Maven's arena challenge. I did not beat it the first time, but man was it such a good feeling to know that I at least made it this far. What a good feeling to know that I didn't fail, that I could make a character to get at least this far. And yeah, I'm probably making a big deal about this and veterans are like, dude, tier 6 is just the tutorial of the endgame. But you know what? I did this on my own trial and error and yeah, I'm also probably still not that good at the game. But I feel accomplished now. So if there are any new players watching this video, please be aware of the investment it takes to really progress in this game. The game punishes you while you learn, but pushes you into complex mechanics at the same time. It doesn't leave any of the content easily accessible and pushes you into community resources to learn anything. It takes a lot of time and focus, but the process is incredibly fun and rewarding beyond belief. And for any of you dear viewers, I'd love to hear your experience with Path of Exile, both endgame and campaign. I'd love to hear about how long it took you to learn things or if you just never had the motivation to progress too far into maps. I'd really like to know if anyone else has tried to learn this game without dipping into the community for guides, builds, and learning mechanics. But most importantly, I hope you enjoyed the video. Even though I didn't get that far in endgame, this one took a long time to make, and I'm truly thankful for your support. I hope you enjoy your adventures into the Atlas, and I can't wait to see what we talk about next.